Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker. It is Friday, October 18, 2019. And in this video, I want to show you a couple of the finds that I made in an estate sale and the story behind that. Uh, one of these is truly a rare piece and I was quite fortunate to find it. So there's a cool story behind it. Also wanted to give you guys an update on the skillets that I picked up around Labor Day weekend. And remember I went on that haul and I bought all that cast iron. Well, this is the result. This is the number two. It's actually closer to a size of a number three skillet. This is the one made in Taiwan. Haven't cooked with it yet, but now has three coats of seasoning on it. And that's what it kind of looks like on the cooking surface. Very, very smooth. It's got some mill work on it, actually. These, this doesn't really look like a bad skillet. Now it has a little bit of abuse in the back. I'm not sure how old it is. Probably need to do a little research on it. Um, eight and a half inch skillet. And um, <clears throat> that's weird. They call it eight and a half inch skillet. And the number, no, maybe that's six. Yeah, it's six and a half inch. Okay. So that is the one made in Taiwan. And I picked that up for my own use. So we'll go ahead and put that down over here and then next up is the this one is the one I picked up at an antique shop in close to Erie PA and this is the one that gave me such fits cleaning I had to go back and forth between the lye tank and between the vinegar soak and just a note on that when you do that it will work um, but you have to be patient and when you take it out of lye it's got to be thoroughly rinsed really really well before it goes into vinegar. Once it comes out of vinegar, you wash it down. You can use soap at this stage of the game. You're cleaning it up. You got to get all that vinegar and all the old carbon off. And if you think that what remains underneath needs to be softened again, put it back into lye. It'll soften what's left and then you go back into vinegar, but make sure you rinse real well each time wearing gloves. You want to keep your hands safe and hands just, you know, generally clean when you do that. So this was the skillet that gave me such a hard way to go. I didn't know it had severe rust on it, but I didn't know if there was fire damage to it or not. Uh, you can see some of the carbon that would not come off. It was so stubborn, but you can see that it looks an awful lot better. So that's what it looks like. That is four, four or five coats of seasoning now on there. We're going to flip it over. And I did do a little bit of sanding on the surface to smooth it out a little bit. But uh, yeah, it is very smooth. I think it would be a good cooker. It is holding the seasoning. So they say fire damage skillets will not hold the seasoning. But yeah, that is the Wagner Ware number 8. So I would go ahead and put that down. Oh, let me see. I'll just go ahead and put it over here. And then next up is the... This one I picked up, I think, a little bit earlier at a garage sale. I think it was, uh, now I'm trying to remember when I got this. Um, it was If it wasn't Labor Day, it was a town garage sale. I did show it on a recent video, though. This is the one that had a ghost mark to it. You can see the W of Wagner. Looks just like that W. And they meant to make this, it is from the Wagner mold. These are both number eights. You can see the handle on this unmarked over here. You can see the handle on this marked. And I've never found one like this, so it's quite rare. This one has a little bit of a warp to it, but it is really, really, actually very well made. This one here that gave me such a hard way to go did not have the milling in the pan. This one here does. So it makes quite an interesting specimen. Look at that. It's just shiny. It does tend to spin a little bit. But uh, there it is there. You can see that. Very smooth surface. Very shiny. You can see the, the mill work all throughout. And it was from the mold over there. Other than, I don't know if they did milling on that one to the right. But they certainly did on this one. So that one, I think I paid all of $5 for. This one I paid a little too much. It was like $22 in an antique shop. I thought I was getting a bargain because I didn't see all the rust underneath. 
But uh, at any rate, that one sits completely fat, flat. There's no spin. Uh, let me move, move my hot pad. Get it out of the way. If you push the handle, there's no spin at all to that. So that, that would be a nice cooker. I may just keep it, but I think I may sell it. I'm not sure. This one here uh, does have a little bit of a spin to it. But it cleaned up really nice. That's got about four or five coats of seasoning on too, and it's nice and shiny. I think the more coats they have, the longer you bake them, the quicker you're going to have the desired effect. Uh, I'm not sure what's wrong with my lens there. Um, and then finally, this is the huge unmarked, but it's a Wagner. That's the maker's mark. This is a number 10. It's 11 three quarter inch skillet. It's got the same font. There is no ghost marks on this. Um, it's just an unmarked Wagner, but it's telltale signs of Wagner. You've got the side wall with the edge there, and then you flip it over, and you've got the fairly defined pour spots. Not quite as large as Griswold or the Airy versions, but you see the milling on that. You see, this one had a lot of use, but um, got it done with... Uh, that is about three three layers of seasoning. I'm probably going to go back in for a fourth, fourth or fifth, I think, to make it look the way I want. That one, I'm probably going to be selling it. And this one was pick, purchased for about $10. Uh, but I'm going to give it a fourth coat of seasoning on this. This is a number 10 Wagner. You can see from the handle. And we'll go ahead and put that back and that is a nice, the larger they are, the more valuable they get just because of the time and effort. And the fact is the larger ones don't seem to survive as long as the smaller guys like the number three here. Okay, now on for what I found at the estate sale. The estate sale, I went there and I got there a couple hours early because they had a pile of skillets off to the right in the basement area. And I asked as soon as I got there, I was number three to get in. And I, I got there early because I wanted to have first dibs at this, those skillets. I said, where are those skillets? And, and he said, downstairs. So I went down, I checked. One was a number, one was actually a number 12. It was a little bit larger than this. But it was an unmarked Wagner. And I there was a concrete floor in the basement. I checked it and it was indeed a spinner. And they wanted $25 for it. I don't think so. They had a little skillet like this. But it was Griswold, large logo Griswold, and they wanted 35 for that. And I'm thinking, whoa, these prices are high. And then they had two other nondescript skillets, and I don't need any more nondescript skillets to deal with at the time. So I started to look for other things that I could pick up. I found a few other things. I won't go into uh, them in the video here. Uh, I get into vi vintage uh, paper, vintage uh, cookbooks, etc. But here I found these in the corner in the kitchen. This one here, I just left the price on so you guys could see. And not a bad price for what this is. This is actually a, it's quite dirty, but I want to dump, I want to get it into the live tank is why I'm doing the video now. This is a BSNR number five. It has the inset heat ring. It's got, this is one of the older ones. I have one um, up just like this. Um, this is probably the, um, Old Mountain. I think it's called the, not the Red Mountain, but the Old Mountain. I can't remember exactly. It's something Mountain Series. Makes it a little bit more valuable. Made back in the 30s and 40s. But you can see all the crud that got onto this. So we definitely need to get it softened in a lie tank. There is some rust here that we can see in the camera that I wasn't able to see, uh, before. Hopefully we can get that off in the vinegar bath. It's patience back and forth. I figured I'd pick it up just to have nothing else than another one to redo. And once I get it looking great, uh, we will probably end up either gifting it or selling it. So there we go. That was a nice find, but by all no means, nothing real rare. But I don't find find BSNR in my area all that much. Now this one also was at the bottom of the stack. There were several other cheap skillets there. Uh, modern, uh, not valuable, and I found this one priced at 12 and you see the handle, and it looks like a number, looks like an 8, but it's hard to tell, a lot of crusty there, a teardrop handle, not like the Wagner, not like the Wagner, and then well-defined pour spouts, 
Very thin though, very thin compared to the BSNR. It's not a good comparison. We'll put a Wagner next to it. Look at the Wagner. Look at this one. Okay, so we have that one. Now, we're going to turn it over on the other side. This is an old Erie skillet. And nope, there isn't any spin to it. No spin. There may be a little bit of warping here, but this skillet, from my research, you got the quotations around Erie. You've got a star maker's mark. You've got a number eight on the skillet with no number N-O before it. And that looks like it could be a maker's mark as well. It's hard to say because it needs to be stripped. It's got the outset heat ring. So this is an Erie pre-Griswold. It is a Griswold, but it's when they didn't call them Griswolds. It's a pre-Griswold Erie made by the same Griswold company from 1870 to 1890 or thereabouts. It's series number two. It's got the very definitive handle on it, as you can see there. And 12 bucks. I figured, you know what? I'm going to take a chance on it to, to see how it cleans up because if this cleans up really nice, uh, there were a couple that sold on by auction on eBay for 163 one that sold closer to 200 by it now. There's one on Etsy right now for $240. So this was score, score, score. We'll see how it did. It turns out, but it's going to go into the lye tank as well. We need to get it soaking. It's starting to get warm out today, so uh, lye works better when it's warm. So we'll see how it goes, guys, but I wanted to at least give you an overview. This is extremely rare. Extremely rare. The one with the spider logo in the center is even more rare. I've seen those sell for $400 up to probably $1,500. They, they, crazy insane prices. So anyway, it's very light, very easy to use. Uh, it's just amazing. So I, I'm going to have a hard time selling it, but I went there for uh, my business, so we'll see what happens. Okay, guys, so this is an Erie. That's a BSNR number 5. This is an unmarked Wagner number 10 with three coats of la layering a seasoning on it. This is an unmarked Ghost Skillet, number 8 Wagner. Number two, Taiwan for my collection, and a number eight Wagner that's marked. Just had some issues going on, but I probably can, you know, we'll see. I'm either going to keep this one and sell this one or vice versa. I'm not sure because I can always use a number eight. All right, guys, I've talked long enough. I appreciate you watching. Um, please remember to leave a comment or a question below. Uh, give me a thumb up. Push the bell uh, if you haven't already subscribed to subscribe and go make it a great day.